guess that means alive. Well, though, um, it is, man, four minutes late. It is 4.04. I apologize. I was talking to my, my friend about making sure we had some things covered for uh, holiday holiday season, if you will. So, uh, so good afternoon, or, yeah, late afternoon. A uh, little change. Usually we do this at 6 o'clock in the evening, but because of uh, some other events going on in the city that I need to be at, uh, we moved it up till, till 4 o'clock. So I hope there's still some individuals out there that we can have some interaction with and talk with. We had a really good session this afternoon at, at 12 noon. Uh, we talked a, a lot about we talked about uh, kind of where we're at with crime in the city. We talked about uh, some of the uh, incidents that we had happen over the weekend, the last four days. <clears throat> we talked about some things moving forward. Uh, we talked about our academy class that just graduated. So we can hit on those things. Uh, but this is our evening session. We'll chat with the chief. We're doing it, like I said, a little bit earlier than usual because of uh, an event that we will uh, I will be attending tonight. Um, uh, former Mayor Joe Frank uh, had passed away, and uh, tonight there is a group, uh, Police Foundation and others, that are getting together and just pay some respects to him and the contributions he made to our city and, and to the police department. And he was my friend. Uh, he was one of the individuals I met. Uh, when I got here, we had some really good conversations. Um, he's just a really good man and a great family. His wife, Jane Susan, had passed away a year before. Uh, so, um, and he had been struggling with some health issues. Uh, a great family. I did get to attend his funeral, and uh, the police department played a role with that. And uh, so, anyway, just out of respect, myself and some others want to make sure that we, we go by and pay our respects this evening. So, with all that, that's the reason we're starting at, at 4 o'clock today. So, I uh, first want to say good evening. Those that, that aren't able to join or, or tune in, if you want to watch uh, this session later on, that'd be great. Uh, one of the reasons, right, thought process again behind, be, behind our chat with the chief sessions is just an opportunity for us to talk. Um, it's a little different being in person. It's a little different than, than uh, some of the community meetings. But what I have seen over the years is, is sometimes the numbers dwindle. Uh, there's still a lot to be said for face-to-face, -face, don't get me wrong. And I'm still not the most um, technological uh, chief. I believe that technology is the future, but I'm not the most. Uh, sometimes I struggle with it, so I don't. I'm not touching anything. Uh, we're just going to have some conversations. It's a chance for you to ask me things, and we talk back and forth. And uh, if we get to a, a lull, then I'll just uh, update you. But I, I will we'll talk to you a little bit about where we are crime-wise, uh, some things that have happened over the weekend and kind of where we're at today as we move forward. So let me say good morning. Good morning. Let me say hello to some people. Maureen, um, wow. Um, first of all, we talked about uh, the trial earlier today uh, with some people that had some questions. Uh, this is Katie Thine's grandmother wondering how the trial is going. So uh, the last I heard is I'm getting updates um, that they were still doing jury selection late into the afternoon, and I imagine that will take a while. They may get opening arguments in today, but a lot of this morning and afternoon had been on jury selection. So uh, I have faith in our prosecuting attorneys. I have faith in our uh, the case that we have brought forward. Uh, I have faith in the judicial system and the individuals that will sit on that jury. Um, and, and a lot of prayer, right, that God, my prayer is that God is in that room. We know he will be that justice will be served for my friend, your granddaughter, Officer Thine. Um, so, yeah, I, you threw me off without being the first question. Um, my heart goes out to you and your family. Um, I got an email from, from Katie's mom. Uh, I saw it this morning. Um, and um, So, yeah. <sighs> you got me, Maureen. Um, Robin, uh, appreciate you being here. Thank you. Um, let me just scroll down just a little bit. Just jump a little bit. Uh, Vanessa, how are you? I'm glad you're here with us. Thank you. Lisa, good to good evening to you. Thanks for being here. Good. I got some people online. I was afraid I wouldn't have anybody at 4 o'clock. I was starting to get worried. So, Lisa, thank you. Uh, I think it was Regina. Regina, thank you for being here today. Um, uh, let's see. Rob, um, Thank you, Robin. Uh, the, the job link said not, 
the job link say not available? Is that what the? I no, I checked it earlier and it was fine on our end. Is so, that the links for dispatcher? Yeah, let me let me ask. Okay. Can you can you tell us where which link specifically you're referring to? So, uh, we looked at the links from what I'm understanding. They look like okay on our end. Let's do this. If you can instant message us a number, I will have a recruiter call you. Um, but I, I need to make sure those are working because we're hiring uh, all the way around. So if you if you can uh, send us a number, or we may send you one. Uh, I think Sarah's typing that up now. How she's doing it, I don't know. But uh, if, if you're interested or, or it's for a friend, I want to make sure we don't lose a contact. But the link should be working, um, or which link you're looking at. But if you get us another, we can talk it through. Uh, Ms. Cox, thank you for being here, representative of the NAACP and community relations between the department and the community. I appreciate you being here. Um, scrolling down here, I got, I got Carrie and Ms. Fields. Uh, good afternoon to you. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Both police recruit and dispatch. All right, we got to check that ASAP. Uh, Dan. Dan, help me. What the number I'm looking at? Is that? Maybe he's interested in a recruiter. Okay. Contacting him. Dan, are you interested in, in a recruiter contacting you, police, dispatch, or is that for, for another incident or situation? All right, let's just scroll down and make sure we get back online where we're at. Lawrence, keep going down. We'll come back and get him. Lawrence, good good evening, my friend. Uh, all right, Dan. So I got your cell number. So Dan, are you looking at is, is your is your request for uh, uh, police recruit or a, a dispatcher or another job? Either way, it's either are fine. I just want to know what to tell them when they call. Um, that's good. We're getting some people. That's really good. All right, Isabella. Good afternoon. Thank you for being here. Okay, it's all right. It's okay. That's good. It's just information coming in. That's okay. I got you, Dan. All right, please. All right, so Dan, we will we will shoot you a call. If they're not if they're gone by the time I get off here, uh, I may call you myself, or or I will have um, I will have I will have a recruiter call you. Uh, but those should be open all the time. Here's what it is. I know they're talking about now. I will fix that. It's okay. It's not. Yeah. Well, before it's you do, those right. links that are coming okay. up in your but chat. But I don't want to miss these conversations. Though. Right. We'll come there back we again. Go. Okay. There we go. Okay. All right. Uh, Dorling, Washington. Good afternoon, Chief. I'm so for all the work you all do in the city of Newport News. Uh, uh, Newport News. Well, Ms. Washington, thank you. I, I, I appreciate that. Um, anything in particular that you're um, you seeing or referring to or just just uh, just in, in, in general? Uh, just kind of share that with me if, if, if you can. And you don't have to if it's just in general. I, I, I appreciate that. I, I will tell you, you know, this job, this profession, I've been doing this for 30 years, and it's changed a lot, right? As we re, reimagine what policing looks like and the culture. And um, I will tell you, for me, I'm, I'm trying to bring individuals into this organization that have a heart for people, that care about one another, um, that, that want to have to understand the challenges, right? This, this profession is not easy. It's hard. It's demanding. You miss, you miss some of those special events. I have people on this department that their Thanksgiving dinner is the day after, and that their Christmas might be two days before because they have to work, or on days off that they're, they're called back in because of situations in the city, or they help cover a, a, a shift or a, uh, of another of another officer who, who may be out because of injury or military leave. Um, but I will tell you, the, the men and women, and look, we don't, Men and women who do this job, for the most part, have a heart for service. They're willing to sacrifice things to help others. And that, that's why I, I am just in awe of men and women who want to do this job today. It means the world to me, and I try to treat them like family. I had an officer uh, earlier today that looked like was going to leave the profession and, and um, after our 1 o'clock or after our noon session. And we, I mean, it was just it was hard. And uh, she's a great, great, great officer. Um, I know she's, you know, thinking of some things. And, and I, I, it was just a hard conversation because they're attached to, to doing this work. Now, 
because we wear this uniform and this badge, this patches on our shoulders, it doesn't mean that we're better than anybody else. We are human. We make mistakes. What it does mean is that we put forth a effort and try to reduce the probability that we will. But it's important. I don't want citizens to think. Think about it for a second. All the things that officers do, eight months of training in an academy, and we put them on the street, and we send them to calls uh, domestics, we send them to uh, violent or criminal acts, critical incidents. Uh, they deal with individuals who are homeless, um, individuals who have drug addiction, uh, all the ills of society. And people have plaques on their walls, right? So they go to four, six, eight years of school to be able to do that. I, I give them about eight, eight hours, right? It is hard. And then the, think about the carnage that they see at times, a traffic fatality, abuse of a child, or uh, a, a shooting, or God forbid, a homicide. Then they go home, hopefully get a good night's sleep, come back in the next day and do the same thing over again or exposed to the same thing over again. That weighs on people. They see things that I wish no one ever saw, that, ne that ever happened. Um, and, and to do that, and then to expect them to get it right every time, I just don't think that's reasonable. So men and women who try that despite the odds, I think that's amazing. To come into the pr profession knowing the Monday morning quarterback and the, the, even the review by me, right, that I can look at their body-worn camera because every officer in this department has one, and I can, I can stop it. I can freeze frame it. I can speed it up. I can slow it down. I can take a break, get something to drink, a cup of coffee, or <coughs> a Diet Mountain Dew, and go back and watch it again. Well, they have to make split-second decisions. They don't get that luxury. That's why the men and women who do this job, I greatly, greatly respect and try to run the department like a family. So when you talk about uh, the professionalism, that's important to me. We spend twice the amount of, of time that is mandated for training to train officers. Um, and I think it starts at the top. It starts with me and the other assistant chiefs about a heart for service, caring about people. Now, we're going to be the police department in this city. I'm not going to tolerate individuals preying on other people or trying to take advantage of other people. I'm not going to just sit back. I don't want uh, kids uh, hearing gunshots and sleeping under their bed or into the bathtub. And I don't want uh, families or elderly individuals afraid to go outside because of things going on in the community. We're going to be the police in this city. But we can do that also with being a respect, just showing, showing respect. And I think that sometimes, you know, no one likes to get into a physical confrontation. No one likes to, to use force. But if someone is under arrest and they choose not to go willingly or they get into a vehicle pursuit and run from the police or they want to fight the police or they're, they're having uh, some reaction to alcohol or, or, or uh, narcotics. There are times, I just watched the videos that we will show tomorrow in our Use of Force Review Board, and there are some that, that cross that line. Uh, and I, I'm, Most of that I saw were officers. Once the struggle was over, it was over. Uh, but it's hard. It's a hard profession, and that's one of the reasons that I am so, so concerned about officers' health and wellness and so honored to work with men and women who choose to do this profession. So I didn't mean to get on that soapbox. I just, this is a hard job. I, I just met with some uh, military folks from Langley, and we talked about uh, different training that we have that they might like to attend and, and vice versa. So it's just a really good, really good day today and good conversations. So, Sarah, I know you're doing some conversations, but I want to stay. We'll, we'll, we'll go back and get, I need to yeah, catch up with some of these. Like so we are going back to Isabel. There she is. Okay. Hey, go back further than that. I want to see what's above that. That, that was my response. I Dan, that. I recruit her. Uh, yes. no, what did Miss Washington, General, thank you, Miss Washington. I appreciate that. Thank you. I, that, that makes sense to me. Okay. Chief, I applied for dispatch. really the best. I never got a call back about my application. So, Isabel, we'll get a number from you, and we will call you back first thing tomorrow. So, that's two people, Dan and Isabel, I want to talk with. Miss Fields, Chief General, I'm a new behavioral mental health company, A&M, defining life's purpose. I would love to know how we can further assist and support the community in Newport News Police Department. Uh, Ms. Field, that's great. You know, if maybe I can get a number from you. We can have some conversations. There's some things that we do in-house. We have a department psychologist. We work with the uh, uh, behavioral health. We have a CARES program where we have right now two vehicles. It is a, a clinician and a, a paramedic. 
that respond to calls for mental illness, mental health, people that might be in some type of mental crisis. Officers still respond, but we kind of become second responders. We'll stay in the parking lot or the driveway unless the situation were to escalate. Uh, we have in our budget to go in, to incorporate a third vehicle, which would be three clinicians and three paramedics. And I'm even willing to expand further. I think tomorrow I have a meeting about the Marcus Alert. Uh, I think we're a little ahead of the game. We've had some other departments, not comparing us to anyone, just other departments have called in-state and out-of-state about how that process is working. And I think it was us in a, in a department in Northern Virginia that were first to have that here in the, in the state. Um, but I think that's important to build on. So maybe there's some things we can do together, uh, and at least have some conversation about what you all offer, uh, those type things. So I, I greatly appreciate that. We also have a, a Christ, uh, critical incident stress management team, a SISM team here, where we have about, uh, what would you say, sir, about 80 officers that are trained uh, on and off that have done some peer-to-peer -peer counseling. Um, and then if something happens internally, we may use some of those officers to do spot checks on people, individuals, sworn and civilian both. Uh, but we also use outside uh, dispatchers, fire department, and other entities as well. So, it, you know, officers' health is important to me, but also their wellness, right? Their, their, their mind, things that they see and process, that, 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 that matters. Uh, so thank you. Uh, Ms. Christensen, thank you. Uh, Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate that. Richard, hello, Chief, from upstate New York. Are you able to say whether the canine officer, officer Jefferson was, I keep reading and hearing due to an incident with a citizen. Officer Jefferson. So, uh, so one, so Richard, I, I, I got to be, let me read this again. I keep reading and hearing that he was due to an incident with a citizen. Yeah, so so I can't talk about personnel issues, but we do. There there hasn't been um, there hasn't been anyone 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 fired for 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 situations. I, I'm not sure what you're, when you say you're reading. I don't know if it's like a a post, a news article, a, a video, um, but yeah, I'm just not sure which which what we're hitting on there. I apologize. I'm just not. Uh, I'm just not sure what what you're asking there. Upstate New York, um, it's funny, my, um, I was talking to my parents, they're in Cincinnati, and it was uh, Saturday here, it was like 70 some degrees, I was at a football game, and going to several events in the city, and uh, my mom and dad, you know, they were talking about having snow, two to three inches in Cincinnati, so I can't imagine what's going on up there, and uh, uh, what's going on up there in, in New York. I did see the Buffalo football game the other day. It looked like sleet and snow going on. So, uh, but yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I just I'm just not sure what what I don't want to tell you wrong. But Officer Jefferson, we do have an Officer Jefferson that still works in our department. Uh, Ms. Baysmore, good afternoon. We support our police and always pray for your safety. Oh wow, uh, Ms. Baysmore, I greatly appreciate that. Uh, that means the world to me. It also means the world to officers. I think sometimes. Um, it's important for them to see and hear. I hope some of the officers go back and read some of the comments, but for you to take the time and write that, that's that matters to me. And I just want to say thank you. I enjoy our conversations. I appreciate you taking the time. So thank you, ma'am. Uh, life's purpose. Okay, got it. That sounds great. I look forward to your call. Perfect. Okay. Uh, do you think it is possible to mark off one handicapped parking space in front of headquarters so that a person with limited walking abilities would be able to park there to do 15 to 30 minute business that's a long walk from the current handicap park if a person wants to. And we can certainly take a look at it. And I, that part, so our parking lot is long rectangle, so I know exactly what you mean. Uh, but I will take I will take a look at it on the handicap parking. Uh, but you make a good point. Um, a yard sale permit. You gotta let me let me tell you something. If you're having a yard sale, you gotta let me know, right? Because I'm coming. Uh, but yeah, I will certainly take a look at that. Richard, uh, yes, our friend from from YouTube. Uh, I would just say this, Richard, uh, Officer Jefferson, Jefferson does a good job uh, at our department. I just got to see him the other day doing some demonstrations with K-9, with the Boy Scout uh, uh, gathering that was here, about 500 Boy Scouts, and Officer Jefferson, the K-9 guys, just did an amazing job. Um, he was in the bite suit, so he might not feel it was an amazing job, but um, he did, he did, he did a, a, it was a good event, and, and having the Boy Scouts and the stuff that they were doing, 
uh, we got to take a little bit of part of that and interact with them. So I thought he did a great job, as as did the canine officers and, and officers that just showed up and, and interacted a lot. Myself and uh, Chief Grinstead and others went up there, walked around a little bit, and got to see the crafts, got to see the, the wooden car races. I remember that when I was a kid, just watching those things. I could never do it, but people spent a lot of time and talent going into building those cars and the weights and all that. Um, but, yeah, we just got to interact a little bit. Uh, there was a uh, young young lady who came up and, and just gave some, passing out thank you cards to first responders and just thanking us for what we do. And I thought that was it was just a good event. It was really good. Uh, they did it two weekends ago. Uh, Ricky, good afternoon, Chief Drew. I was wondering if the police ride-along program is still in place. It is. Thanks for all you do in the office. Yeah, it, it absolutely is. We're still doing those. Or we actually require those for officers who want officers, for individuals who want to join the department. Um, so if you apply, we'll set one up that way. Or if it's just something that you want to do and, hey, I want to ride the whole 10 hours or I want to ride four hours or just a couple hours, um, you can just contact us. We'll get that. We'll just send an application to you. Do it and uh, bring the application with you. We'll assign. We'll you know you tell us kind of what uh, shift you'd like to ride or what particular area. Our city city is linear, so north, central, and south precinct. Um, and and we'll we'll set it up. We'll have you bring the paperwork in. The sergeant will sign off on it. Tell you what to do, what what restrictions and all that come into play. But yes, we do it. I think it's a great program. Um, it really gives you an uh, it really gives you an idea of, of what officers do and, and, and just when you hear that radio come across and you hear some of the concerns in the background or what the dispatcher is sending an officer to you kind of start feeling that call come through that radio and you start feeling it in you uh, and I do think it gives good insight um, to what what officers do each day day in and day out right and, and the stuff that they respond to uh, yeah, Richard, thank you, my friend. I appreciate, I appreciate that. And we're all good. We're caught up. So, all right. So I just want to touch base. I talked about this earlier. I won't spend a lot of time on it. Uh, and I'll try to catch new posts as they come in. Uh, right now, the city sits at about 11% increase in crime compared to last year. So if you ask me, Chief, well, what's driving the crime numbers? So we're up about uh, two homicides from last year. We currently have 20, 20, 25 compared to 23. We're up about six or seven shootings. So that's only uh, uh, eight incidents there. So what's driving us? What's creating that 11% increase? It's larcenies, it's thefts, shoplifting, stealing. And that's about 120 incidents up from last year. And, and, and what myself and other chiefs have looked at is, is in 2020 and 2021, as we were in the pandemic and coming out of it at the end of 2021 and beginning of this year, is a lot of businesses and stores were closed down. There wasn't a lot of places people weren't out and about going. So I looked at our larceny numbers compared to 2019 before the pandemic, and they're almost identical. They're almost identical. So not giving an excuse. I'm, I'm telling you open and transparent. Crime's up 11% in our city. What's driving us is our larcenies. Now, disclaimer. Uh, some people say, Chief, you know, that you're just talking numbers. And, but it is important that we're evidence-based and data-driven. But I also know that every one of those shootings, every one of those homicides, every one of those shoplifting, every one of those incidents or reports made, it is a business or a person, a family, a community, a neighborhood, a department that's affected. I don't lose sight of that. But the one when I look at those crime numbers and data, what it allows me to do is look at our strategies that we have in place. And if I'm seeing incidents on the rise, then we've got to change our strategies. If I see strategies that might be working in one precinct, they're decreasing. And and we're not doing those same strategies in another where crime's increasing, maybe maybe uh, adopting those strategies. And I'm not saying what works in every, every, every precinct is the same or even in this department compared to others, but it's something to look at. So it's a way to track. Is crime decreasing, increasing, or staying, staying the same? But uh, that's kind of where we're at. Um, and while I'm there, uh, we had a couple uh, violent incidents over the weekend. Um, start off with we had a 13-year-old uh, who suffered a gunshot wound to her leg. Um, as we investigated and went through the process, what we were able to determine was that she was with friends and uh, they had a firearm. It's a whole other story, but they had a firearm and it went off accidentally. There wasn't any intent from what I understand. And she suffered a gunshot wound and she is doing better. Um, it's not life-threatening, but horrific incident, right? 
Uh, the second, we had a uh, domestic between a father and a son where there was a, uh, shots were fired. Um, father is 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 recovering and there are warrants on file for the for the for the son. And there will also be charges in that accidental shooting. Um, we need to make sure that there's a process that that type of behavior doesn't continue. Um, then the last, we had an individual that showed up at a hospital in Hampton and said he was shot here in Newport News. We're trying to verify that. Some of the technology we have is uh, maybe a little counter, uh, not syncing up with exactly what we're saying or what he's saying. So we just need to go and verify that that's actually what occurred. And then regrettably, uh, at 3.30, 3.45, Sunday afternoon, uh, late afternoon, early evening, uh, we responded to a call in Traverse Lane uh, where shots were fired. Upon arrival, uh, the police and the medics, we located an adult male uh, in his early 20s, suffered gunshot wounds, and was deceased, pronounced deceased at the scene. Uh, that's one of the reasons yesterday around uh, 4 o'clock, a group of us, about 35, 40 officers and civilian chaplains, uh, met in, in that neighborhood across from the church and walked and talked to uh, citizens who live in that area. And one is, you know, if you saw anything or heard anything, to please let us know. Anything that might have been captured on a ring camera, if you heard anything in the area around this time. And we were able to talk to some individuals who, who had some information. But the other is this. It's for officers and chaplains and some of the civilian employees we have. Crime analysts and others. To knock on doors and let people know that we care about them. And we're just here to check on you. And I tell that story because there was a little boy, he was seven years old, and I talked to his mother. He was in his pajamas, so I asked if he was okay, and she said, Chief, it was a pajama day at school. And uh, so I said, okay, oh, I got it, I got it. Um, but she said he was scared about what had happened, and then seeing all these officers walk in the neighborhood, he was, he was afraid. Uh, so I knelt down and I talked to him, and uh, what we did is uh, we took a photo. After we had some conversation, and reassured him, but we took a photo of about 30 or 40 people, primarily officers, like in a, a horseshoe with him in the middle. And uh, we told him that, that, you know, we're all part of his family and he's part of ours, extended family wise, right? Like a bunch of aunts and uncles. And uh, he started laughing and he was giving officers high fives. And uh, he told us he wasn't afraid. And, and um, it's just, and, and he, as we left, he was laughing. And, and I, how do you know? And he was missing two front teeth. And I just, it was just, a, it was a good moment. And, and here's what I liked. We're out there interacting with our community. Something tragic had happened, and we're out there the very next day interacting with our citizens. These detectives are trying to piece together what happened and, and who, who's responsible. Reassuring our community and our citizens, making sure that they're okay, letting them know we care about them, and interacting with those that might be afraid or scared or concerned. But another thing happened yesterday. Some of the officers there are brand new recruits who just graduated our academy. They just walked across the stage last week. And for them to come out and, and interact and see what, what was going on, to see what it means when we talk about community policing and a community foundation, that's important. So for those young recruits that were there yesterday, that, there was a lot of learning going on. And that, that's, you can't teach that in a classroom. You can't teach that in an academy. We can talk about how important it is. But to see it and feel it and to see that smile on that young man's face, that is community policing. So that's one of the things that we that we try to do to interact and build relationships. And Dr. Lyons was sitting here beside me. He's kind of a special advisor uh, to the police department, myself, and our relationships with the community. Um, and we talk about how important it is, communication and, and building relationships and respect for one another. We don't have to always agree. But to be able to sit down at a table and reason together and talk to each other, I think we get a lot more accomplished that way. And when you know somebody cares about you, or you certainly feel like they care about you, that's a big difference than, than just the first time you meet. It's on some type of critical incident, right? That, that, that's one of the reasons we do the chats for the, with the chief. And that's one of the reasons we walk in neighborhoods. And that's one of the reasons that I ask officers to be uh, integrated in this community, right? To, to invest in people, and invest in the invest in the 187,000 citizens that we work for. And I also want the, the citizens to, to learn and know their officers. Um, 
Let me get caught up here a minute. Um, Ricky, good afternoon, Chief. I was wondering if right along is good. Uh, Miss Fields, that's amazing. So thank you, Miss Fields. Let, let me share this as we talk about <coughs> reimagining law enforcement and, and development and building relationships. We have 16 officers who graduated. 16 officers graduated the academy. And we have a program called Young Adult Police Commissioners. And that's a freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior of every high school. So we have six in the city, so 24. Somehow we got 27. I don't know where they came from. But we got 27 students that we work with every Wednesday. I said it earlier. Pizza is out. Chick-fil-A is in. That's what they want. We try to mix it up. Chief, where's the Chick-fil-A? And the assistant chiefs like the Chick-fil-A day as well because that's where I find them. So what we did a couple weeks ago before they graduated is we had the recruits and these 27 students in a room. And we started talking to each other. So I was just facilitating the conversation. And as they went on and talked about concerns and issues on both sides, what they both said in different ways was students said, we want you to respect us. We want you to interact with us. We want you to talk to us, not to judge us by my skin color or where I live, what my zip code is. An officer said, believe it or not, we'd like you to talk to us, to interact with us, um, to not judge us by our uh, what you might see in another jurisdiction or you might see that happens in another state. Um, you Don't judge me by because of the uniform I wear. They were both talking about knowing each other, right? Going back to relationship building. So on graduation day, 16 recruits graduate. There were about five or six students who skipped, who missed school. Dr. Parker, superintendent, I don't want you to mad at me, who missed school that day and came to see those recruits graduate. And I have seen students talk to recruits and invite them to school events. And I have seen recruits go to those school events. That is building relationships. I think that is how you reimagine um, whether we're interacting and going to uh, football games and the playoffs. I got to see Benchville and Woodside play. I got to see uh, Hampton and, and Warwick play on Saturday. Um, to see the SROs there interacting with, with parents and students and principals, school officials, the security staff there at the gate and around the field, talking to individuals as they come in and they leave. I think that's how you build relationships. It doesn't have to be, or we're going to have a meeting every month. It can be a two or three minute conversation every day. Um, so I just share that with you. That's some of the things, um, that's some of the things that we're trying to do. Joseph, when does the next school start for new recruits? So Joseph, we are hiring and recruiting. I have a class of 16 that just graduated. There's another class of 20 that will graduate in March. And we are now hiring for the class that will start February 1. So uh, uh, my goal is to have 32, 33 people in that class. So if you're interested, let's get an application filled out. We'll get you in here and, and start the background process and and, uh, and and go on from there. We'll get you to do a ride along. And if it's something that you like, if you think you like this profession and like this department, um, we got a, look, a lot of good things going right now, momentum. We're getting a lot of uh, interest on things we're doing from the state. I will tell you, I think we're the most progressive department with technology in the region. Um, every officer gets a cell phone, license plate readers, real-time crime center, integrating with camera systems, with different entities. Um, we do twice the amount of required training by the state. Um, and, and in this department, I want to make sure that we're investing in people. Training is something very, very heavy and dear to me. Mental health and wellness is something very, very near and dear to me. Workplace balance is is something uh, near and dear to me. So to try to create create this as a department of choice. But again, I just say that, that policing is hard. It's hard because there's a lot of individuals who stand on the sidelines and critique it. They don't want to do the job, but they can tell you everything we do wrong. The things that you miss, the things that you see, and the job that you have to do. But for that reason, for individuals who still want to do this job, for individuals who still want to interact with community and citizens, for those individuals that are still willing to sacrifice and put others first, that to me is heroic. That matters to me. So 
with that, um, I want to work with, with officers who want to do that type of uh, commitment, uh, that want to interact with our community, interact with youth. That's one of our foundations. Uh, but yeah, to answer your question directly, uh, our next class will start February 1, and it is my hope to get about 30, 32, 33 people in that, in that class as we move forward. Okay? Uh, so we talked about some of the incidents that happened over the weekend. We talked about our crime numbers, where we're at. We talked about what's driving us. Um, we talked a little bit about uh, some things that we're doing now. Uh, a couple of things coming up. We'll have our, our holiday uh, season up at uh, City Center, where we'll, uh, there'll be a lot of the, the tree lighting and, and um, the Christmas time up there and all the events and stuff that'll go on there. Uh, so we'll have officers up there interact with community. The same at Brooks Crossing. Uh, the different uh, lights and bonfire and those things that will go on down there uh, in the south uh, part of the city. Uh, myself and about 10 or 12 other individuals will be going over to Norfolk on Saturday. They have a celebration of lights. I've never been there before. I think it's like their Christmas kickoff, uh, uh, but it's in the evening. And because of some shortages, they've asked for some departments to help. And uh, we've been there before, and we're going to go back and help them again. They would do the same for us. Uh, so we, we help each other. We have some MOUs in place. So myself and, and Chief Grinstead, I believe Captain Petrosky, Lieutenant Raj Kumar, uh, Sergeant Rogers, and a group of about 12 are going to go over there and just interact with the crowd a little bit and just keep citizens safe from the area, the Hampton Roads area, that will come enjoy the, the, the parade and the, and the lights. So it'll be, it'll be a good event. So I'm, uh, we'll, I'm glad to be able to help, help out on that. Uh, as we move forward to the, the holiday season. I can't believe Thanksgiving is like around the corner, days away, and Christmas right behind that. So more driving, right? I'm just going to remind everyone to please be careful as, as there will be more traffic on the road and if school starts to get out for the holiday season, there will be kids interacting. Please just be careful. Uh, I was talking to my friends up at the mall, making sure we have the mall covered and some holiday patrols in the area. Uh, but I really look I really look forward to the holiday. This is my favorite time of year. It gets a little colder, but I really enjoy this time of year. Um, Ms. Fields, if we can become multiple voices with one sound, I believe we can bridge the gap. Ms. Fields, I, I agree. I think the more people we bring to the table and the conversation we have uh, is, is paramount, and I think that's where it starts. Uh, Mark, any updates on the Ms. Lewis? Now, Mark, I wish there were. Um, I feel comfortable with the investigation. Uh, I feel comfortable with the conversations I've had with the detectives and the Commonwealth attorneys that have interacted with the detectives on the case. Um, I wish, my prayer, that we would find to provide some closure for the family. Um, I, you know, family members that go through something like that, it is unimaginable. Um, so I wish, I wish I had some better information coming forward with you on updates. I just don't have that. I don't want to say anything that hurts the case, um, but, but, um, that is, a, that is a, a tough, tough situation all the way around. Is that for me, Sarah, or something different? Yeah, so you actually got a, a question after your last chat with the chief. I don't think this person is on, but okay. you might want to answer it, and I can send message for the let her know when you to know watch what? your response. That, that's like font one. Can you read that to me? With your young eyes compared to my old eyes. This person's name is Madden Summertime. They ask, what seems to be the greatest challenge for your department currently, and how can the public help? That's a great question. So the question is, what is the greatest challenge for the department? I think, and, and then how, how can people help? I think, um, gosh, I, I, <laughs> so one of the things I think that we're facing in law enforcement today is that we don't see the same number of officers that want to do this job. When I started 30 years ago, there was a room full of people for one or two positions, and, and you, you know, fighting to get that job. Now, uh, with things, things that have happened over the last couple of years, the people have shunned away from law enforcement, or they're unsure about law enforcement. So we're not just hiring anybody off the street, right? We're, we're still looking for individuals who have a heart for service. We can teach people how to write reports, how to drive the vehicle, work the equipment, and their firearms, and the tasers, and the OC spray. Uh, we can work with them procedure and teach them the law. What I cannot teach is service and a heart for people. Um, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, 
uh, to bring people in, expose them to the community, and, and have people here who want to help other people. So the biggest challenge, I think, is we're not seeing the same number of applicants who want to do this job. I think that some of the challenges is marketing this job and showing how beneficial it can be in helping others. Um, what can the community do? I think things that you're doing, like sending that email in, some of the comments that I've read here today, tonight and earlier this morning, the emails that I get just about at least one or two every day. Chief, thank you for how your officers responded to the situation with my autistic child. And they, the way they responded when I when I told communications uh, that there's a situation and please don't have lights and sirens on, it will scare him. And then here is a follow-up response. And they skipped down a couple lines, enter, 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 and it said, thank you, Chief, for how they responded. And by the way, I was impressed by the diversity in your department. I think by, by taking a moment and sending a message of thank you, thank you for keeping us, us safe during the this football games. I got an email from several individuals. It's a large football game here in the city. Thank you for the officer's presence, helping with traffic control, the way they talk to people as they come in and went out. I think that kind of sets a tone for not only our department, but our city. Um, letting us know when there's a problem, but also sharing us those good stories and, and talking about and showing appreciation. That means a lot. It's not giving them any more money in their paycheck. It's not giving them a nicer car or a better building to work out of. It's not changing any equipment they have, but what it does show is an appreciation for what they do day in and day out. I see it. I have seen officers buy, buy kids bicycles, uh, put food in a, in a house when there isn't any. I have seen officers give people breaks that are struggling, going through hard times, that uh, counseling, I've seen them coaching, I've seen them acting as big brothers and big sisters, I see them put in extra time and effort. I see those SROs that spend time with youth over and over and over again investing in our future. So I think, how could you help? It's just telling them thank you. When you see an officer, just tell them thank you. That means the world to them, I promise you. I speak that from experience. Uh, next class, multiple voices. Uh, yeah. uh, Chelsea, yep, good afternoon, Chief. Uh, I, I have sent you an email with some ideas of helping the community. Okay, did you, uh, was it just today or some other emails that you have? But. I'm always interested in that. I've got a stack on my desk that I have not gone through. They haven't really had a chance to sit down and meet with <coughs> Brittany, my assistant. I had some meetings uh, this afternoon. I got to meet some of the military from Langley. They came here. We talked a little bit about some things we can do together on training and classes and, and sharing information. Uh, that was a really good meeting. I looked at our use of force videos that we will show tomorrow at our use of force review board. Uh, that's nine members, right? Five citizens, four officers, five and four, nine. No way that can be a tie, right? Five, right? Five, nine. Uh, so we'll do that tomorrow. Um, we'll have, uh, we'll invite some guests in to observe, but those nine individuals, five citizens, four officers, will vote if the officer's actions were in policy, if they were out of policy, or if they were in policy. But here might be some things we can do for training. So you'll see some things. Um, you know, again, we're human. Just because I put this on, right? We're human. You'll see some things where there's a fight and, and an officer might use foul language. Um, you'll see some where uh, officers will be spit on and be kicked. Um, you'll see individuals that are going through uh, domestic situations that have been drinking. You'll see individuals that have hurt themselves. Um, you'll see individuals that, that uh, have warrants on file and don't want to be arrested and resist. You'll, you'll see individuals that will strike officers, um, and then we, yeah, right, we, we, they will vote, and then they will determine if those actions that the officers did were in policy or out of policy. That's something we've had around for a while. I think it's been very, very beneficial, and we've had uh, principals, teachers, uh, school officials, members of the NAACP, um, community members, pastors sit on that panel and board, and you know, that they have an understanding of what use of force is, what is excessive force, what is improper. Uh, so it's a really, it's really good. And, and when we first started it, you know, there were some officers that like, whoa, we're going to bring civilian in and have them judge what we do. Uh, but now I'll tell you, there's not an empty seat in the room. Uh, we have the recruits come in and watch it so they get an understanding. I think it helps us with questions that citizens ask opposed to, to myself. I chair that, but I don't vote. Um, I will ask how many fill in policy, how many out of policy. It's just a really good interaction. We have our tr uh, training uh, officials, training staff from the academy. 
and you can ask, they ask any question. Why do we not tase someone in the back? Well, because if they're running and we use a taser and they lock up, they fall flat. Now, although we don't encourage that or train that, if someone has just committed a horrible, violent act and the only way to stop them, then I'm okay with that. You have to look at the totality. And that's what we talk about. Officers have to make snap second decisions. The officers will be there. You can ask the officers what was going through your mind. What did you think? What did you hear? Why did you do this? Why did you do that? Um, and make recommendations. So it's, it's very interactive and I think it's very, very beneficial. Uh, so I, I enjoy those. Um, we're going to do that tomorrow. Uh, let's see, what do we got? Um, hi, Chief. Thanks for all that you have done. You're doing well, Mark. Martin, I appreciate that, my friend. That means a lot. Uh, I'll share that with the officers as well. Let me let me tell you, I, you know, being the chief of this department is humbling. I work with great men and women. I'm talking about dispatchers, forensic technicians who work in the cold weather and process crime scenes, from officers, detectives, people here in the, in the media relations or PIO office, um, our assistants that we have, our traffic division, can people who work in records and make everything go, everything works together. Um, I'm humbled, but the men and women who do this job deserve all the credit. Um, I think I set the tone. Uh, I think I have to be able to create an atmosphere where uh, if officers are struggling or need help, or citizens, whatever it might be, struggling or need help, that they're, this is a, an atmosphere that it's okay to talk about those things and ask for that help. And not maybe not wait for someone to ask. If we see someone involved in a critical incident, we might send them to our department psychologist just so I know that we at least had some conversation, that we send officers to deal with CIT training and SISM training, critical incidents, and, and um, making sure that we're okay. Interacting with our youth, focusing on community policing, solving crimes that occur, our clearance rates, they should be above the national average. Making sure that we staff the department the right way, working with our recruiting division to bring in the right officers, our background investigations to get them across the finish line, uh, and our training academy then to train them. All those things go together, uh, but I think all of it starts with the right people, the people with the right heart that want to do this job, and everything else we can teach them. So, I I, I appreciate that, Martin. That means um, that means a lot. I appreciate that. Um, what is it, about four forty? Well, we still got a little bit. Um, if I missed anybody, Sarah, are we doing okay? Um, I will take a moment and, and wish everyone, you know, this is our last uh, session that we'll have in, in November. So I want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Um, please be safe if you're traveling, you know, enjoy time with your family and, and friends. Uh, we have so much to be thankful for. Uh, I know that times are hard and challenging, but uh, we lean on each other. We get through things together. We're all in this together. Um, Appreciate the partnerships that we have in this community, in this department. Um, I'm very fortunate, very, very fortunate to have a, a mayor and city council that, that work with us. And they ask hard questions. That's okay. It's not like that everywhere. I'm, I'm very thankful for the relationship we have with our city council, our city administration, uh, Ms. Cindy Roth, our manager, and uh, Alan Archer and Bo Clayton, assistant city managers. And, uh, I'll, uh, Dr. Parker, a school superintendent, Rashard Wright with schools. Just a great relationship there. We, so we close out football, right? We still got some good teams in the playoffs. Um, and, and we move into basketball and making sure that we're talking to each other. We've got a good plan moving forward for safety. Um, our, our CSB board, uh, our, our human services, our social workers that are working to make sure that our youth and elderly and families are strong and protected and safe. Our domestic violence teams and transitions and other entities and churches uh, now that are on board and helping us if we have someone in the middle of the night or on the weekends or off hours that might need help with housing or food or clothing or something that they're going through with they're afraid to leave a situation because they don't have something that we have partners and friends we can work with the fire department um, code enforcement works and utilities all that work together you know the stuff that we're doing to address blight and get ahead of that issue lighting and overgrown shrubbery and buildings that are abandoned and not boarded up correctly. All those things play a role. All those things play a role. So those partnerships work and it makes makes things important on how we move forward. Uh, so so I am I'm very, 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 very thankful. And like I said, we do have a lot to be thankful for. Ms. Fields, thank you. You're absolutely right. 
I do want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, this evening, I will go and pay my respects to former uh, uh, Mayor Joe Frank. Uh, myself and the other chiefs will go by. He's having a, they're having, his family's having a memorial service. And um, uh, he was no longer the mayor when I got here in 2018, but he was a mentor to me. We had a lot of good conversations. I got to see him a little bit before he passed. I was very close with he and his family and enjoyed our conversations. So uh, he did a lot for our city. He helped start our uh, police foundation board and things that he's done here. So we'll pay our respects. And tomorrow uh, we will go see uh, Mayor McKinley Price, who is definitely a mentor to me. He will give his final state of the city address. Uh, so I look forward to, to, to attending that with assistant chiefs as well and, and, and as we move forward. Um, we will, once we get through the holiday season, uh, like I said, we'll have that new academy. It'll start in February. We'll lay out our goals and objectives. Uh, what did we achieve this year? Where did we fall short? And then we'll set our new goals and objectives for next year. I can tell you uh, one of my top priorities is getting the staffing of this department where we need to be. Uh, but also uh, civilianizing some positions that I think we can get uh, a benefit out of from hiring civilians, that we will expand our part-time workers, uh, individuals that have retired, whether from the police department or other professions that might want to come back and do some different things uh, with the department, that we have positions for uh, investigators with um, white-collar crime uh, that work in our real-time crime center and our records division. I want to get increase our uh, staffing with dispatchers. I want to make sure that we're still bringing in good officers and stay on top of that. The city's actually doing some things to help me recruit officers and retain officers that are here. We're going to continue to build and expand on our technology. Uh, I could not be happier with the way that's going. I just sent two assistant chiefs, uh, Creswell and Hires, to Dallas. There was a chief's convention, um, 2,500, 3,000 chiefs across the country and some from outside the country. Uh, that talked about policing, and it's always also a good measure of where we're at. Are we kind of behind the eight ball? Are we right there in the middle? Are we above the game? Um, Captain Dunbar and some others once went up to D.C. to talk about uh, issues in recruiting and, and ideas. And again, are we doing some of those things? Are we right in the middle? Are we above the game? So not comparing us to anybody, but I'm telling you, a lot of departments are asking what we're doing. And I, I, again, I, I think that we're very, very blessed. Um, there's a lot of people in this community that pray for us. I got to attend a church service um, on Seventh Day Adventist Church on, on, on Saturday, thank them for what they do for domestic violence. And all those things just come together. And, and you know what? When we look at some of the issues that we respond to and deal with, a lot of them get at the front door of law enforcement, but they have so many other entities that mental illness and homelessness and uh, panhandling and, and autism and, and bullying, right? There are so many other entities that play a role in having those relationships. And I just think we have a, a fantastic faith-based community. Um, and I don't just mean a certain part. I mean throughout, up and down the city. Uh, I'm very, very fortunate to have relationships with those pastors. And often they will just call and say, Chief, we'd like to pray for you in the department. And I'll take everyone. I'll take everyone. So as we get up, coming up on five o'clock, I don't want to, I don't want to hold people up. I, I hope, I want to thank everyone for the, the set down. And if you or stay for the whole time, or you'll watch the the, the interviews and conversations uh, later on, uh, if you're recorded and watch it, watch it again on Facebook if they want to. Um, the whole point in this is just to open the doors and kind of have <coughs> have some conversation. Um, I think uh, I think we've got a playoff game. Uh, this week, I look forward to going to that. Like I said, um, we'll be going over to Norfolk on Saturday and helping out a little bit with some extra manpower and interacting with the citizens there and talking to people about moving to Newport News and, and joining our department. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Um, I want to make sure that I recognize the men and women uh, that are doing our recruiting and our background investigations. They're, they're doing a phenomenal job. There's another all day recruiting coming up. Um, in December. I want to say December 2nd, December 3rd. December 2nd or 3rd. We'll make sure we get that posted. Um, Rhea, how are you doing? You better be studying. Um, third. December 3rd. Um, so that will start around 10 in the morning. 8. We're going to start at 8 in the morning. I'll be getting up early. We're going to start at 8 in the morning. I'll probably go to 2 or 3. 
We won't turn anybody away. So in that day, when people come in and they want to join this department, we'll do, instead of doing a process and then leave and then you come back two or three weeks later, we're going to do everything in that day. Um, that's a benefit, right? That is a huge benefit. So people that come from out of state, out of town, or right here locally, you can schedule an appointment or you can just show up. We're going to work it through. Um, so I enjoyed that the last time. I'll come back and and uh, and, and do some things and interact with that. So that's just, I really appreciate the work that they're doing. So again, I want to tell everybody to please uh, uh, enjoy. Have a great, uh, great holiday season. Um, hope to see a lot of you out and about. Uh, we'll be giving some food away and, and doing some things. And yeah, so it's just, it's really good. Um, we got to, um, you know, before I go, let me just, I also want to thank um, our police foundation. You guys have done some amazing things and support that you give us through our graduations and promotion ceremonies. Um, we a lot of things we couldn't do without you. And, and you've uh, been the springboard for uh, our, our body-worn cameras, the springboard for our outer carrier vests, and men and women who serve on that board. I'm very, very appreciative. I'm very, very appreciative means a lot it means a lot to these officers so um it just today uh some individuals sent uh, i can't even believe i'm gonna say this i'll tell you what they sent in some desserts to the police department um the round kind that we get joked about a lot um so i gotta make sure nobody sees me eat one of them or maybe two but uh, i appreciate everyone please be safe faith i appreciate that um thank you so much happy thanksgiving to you and your family be safe. We'll do this again in December, um, and hopefully I'll be able to share with you some more good news as we move forward. So if anything we can do for you, um, I appreciate the relationship we have with this community. I think it is what makes uh, one of the things that makes Newport News as great as it is. God bless you all. We'll do this again in December. Happy Thanksgiving.